by everybody's grace, welcome to Eating Peace in the Summer. So I've been thinking lately about um, a notion that really drives compulsive behavior of any kind, addictive behavior, kind of that cycle of trying to escape, trying to find comfort, trying to distract or get away from or express anger through a substance, through using something, rather than coming back to being just with the um, raw experience as it is. And that is the experience of being a victim. Very uncomfortable. Even the word victim is almost like calling someone a name. She's such a victim. He's such a victim. It's like really this uh, terrible thing to be called. You know, none of us want to be a victim, especially these days. There's been like a lot of looking at, you know, what is a victim? When you feel like something's being done to you or coming at you. And I myself am very little itsy bitsy small. Thinking about once I was on a board with somebody and so I didn't see her often but regularly for meetings and every time I entered her presence I felt like I to be honest was a victim of her extreme talking or dominating the meeting or running running the board when it, in my opinion it wasn't her place very interesting experience and I had this sort of graced shield around me entering the presence of this person. I didn't call it being a victim but that's exactly how I felt when I look back on it and have done the work on it many times you know just sat with it what is going on when I'm in the presence of this person and I feel like um, I need to escape or put up a shield kind of a hostility defensiveness so just that's one thing to notice is if you feel really, really uncomfortable in the presence of somebody and you notice ever that you might get triggered, often family members in a deep way can offer this, and you feel like you need to run away and get away from it, like they can hurt you, just look at that a little bit and see where you feel like you're a victim of this person's behavior. Now, in order to feel the empowerment I have a wonderful, wonderful thing that you can do. So when, when I have felt like I'm a victim of a circumstance or personality or situation, often what multiplies in that moment is a sense of there's no way out. I am trapped, right? Victims are trapped. They're like always need rescuing. They um, can't make it on their own. They're, everything's in chaos and the world is out to get them right? In the form of whatever person, whatever, you know? You try on, you have on those clothes for a moment. That's how I felt when I was in the presence of this person, just walking in, you know, not open, closed, cut off, defended with my shields up, just waiting for the next thing that was going to drop that I wouldn't like, that I'd have to get away from. But look at how I was feeling about myself. So you can always kind of Let's take our viewpoint off that other person or that situation or that thing that seems like it's coming at us and going to hurt us. How am I looking at myself? I'm looking at myself like I am so tiny and wee and small and, um, you know, kind of floppy and weak that I can't speak up for myself. I can't take a stand. I can't just stand on solid ground. It doesn't even mean like I need to have fighting power. Like, I don't need to hurt that person back. There's this really wonderful little phrase that Byron Katie, who, as you know, is my favorite, favorite um, inquirers and somebody who's shared with so much wisdom with us around questioning thought. And she says, victims are vicious. Victims are vicious. How I know I'm seeing myself as a victim of something is when I feel that sharp, vicious anger, when I feel angry. Really, when I feel any kind of anger, <laughs> there's something that I am believing. My viewpoint of myself is that I'm a victim of something. Well, look at how I'm looking at myself. So small, so unable to move past that. Step number one, of course, as you often hear me say, I invite everyone to question their thinking. Really write down everything that you're thinking about that other person or situation that is harming you, you know? See all the words. 
see what their concepts are that arise by filling out a Judge Your Neighbor worksheet and then taking your thoughts through self-inquiry. It's so powerful because you live those turnarounds and you see, you know, the, the view and the perspective can change and you start moving out of defensiveness and into more openness. But to really live the turnaround of I am not a victim in this situation, I am powerful, I am loving, I am grounded, I am strong, and just hold that, is an incredible meditation all in itself, just to find the feeling. You don't even have to know what words you would use the next time you run into that person. You just watch. I sometimes love what I call the tree meditation. I often will suggest it and use it with people that I work with and on retreats around who would you be without your belief? Who would you be without the thought that you were so tiny and you're a victim and you can't get out of the situation except by eating, <laughs> by stuffing your face? I know, you know, I'll run away out of this meeting and I'll start eating right away afterwards or I'll hang out with my family for a while and then I'll go start, wow, I just don't know what it is, but I feel like compulsively eating my head off. Well, just slow that down and see what's actually going on and review the feelings and really, really investigate and explore. It's amazing. Victim, I'm afraid of being hurt. I already have been hurt and I'm scared. I feel very, very small. If I felt this sense of love and openness and even power, and I mean that in a very solid, beautiful, open way, a sense of power, so that I am no longer playing out even being a victim of my own compulsions, you know? I mean, it just, once that little thing starts where you feel like you can sense being hurt or abandoned or, you know, hurt, <laughs> harmed in some way, um, a victim of some circumstance or a person or situation, once you begin to think of that as true, and then you see yourself as a victim, wow, it just unfolds, and then everything you yourself are doing is you're a victim to yourself. I mean, how many times did I do that over and over again by overeating or binge eating or obsessing about food or you know calling myself names or over-exercising, running for miles and miles when I didn't really want to be running and it wasn't really healthy and natural to be doing that a victim of my own um, brutal, my own brutality, joining in with that same mindset. The good news is nobody else has to change in order for you to no longer feel like a victim. Let those people just be doing whatever they're doing, whether they want you to rescue them or help them, or if they're just uh, feeling mean coming at you, angry, let them be as they are very difficult if you keep trying to change them or escape from them. And let's come back to this, who I am, and can I first just begin with not being a victim of myself? And one of the key ways is to trust my own voice, to speak up. No, I do not want that. Yes, I like that over there. I welcome that. Oh, and now it's a no. If I can feel a sense of yes and no and kind of limit, stop and go, if all of that is okay and it's not just everything has to come in, I'll go, go, go all the time, or I have to respond to other people if they make requests, if I can just have a little sense of my own, if anyone asks me for anything in this world, kind of check in, is this a yes or is this a no? And respond in my own time. No urgency. There's no emergency. To say, you know what, I'm going to give some thought to that and I will get back to you later. That sense of being able to even trust your own feelings and that they are worthy and valuable and you don't have to be a victim of them, of your own answer, will begin to be like this little fiery spark, like a little kindle starting, and it can grow and grow where all you really are looking at, all you're really working with is trusting yourself to answer honestly in every situation and to be with the present moment, to be with this day, with this world, with food, without feeling like a victim of it. Powerful, loving, open to the mystery, 
not having to have set answers, but being clear that you are going to draw a boundary when you need one or not have one when you don't. And then you're going to take care of yourself. You're going to take care of yourself and your own feelings in the deepest, most beautiful way. If it means somebody else is really disappointed or they get upset, it's just fine. It's no big deal because you yourself are really, really important. You're the number one. You're the most, your job is to take care of you and to see what your own answers are and see what your own movement is and to dissolve that sense of being so tiny and small that you have zero power and that you are a victim of others and the universe and the world and the sun shining and the heat and the weather. <laughs> no. What if you are not a victim and you're in a dance with this thing equally as important? equally as brilliant, sharing, saying, yeah, I see where you're going with that. You know what? I need a little more time. That's not for me or whatever. Being able to say that guilt-free because that is the truth. So more on this in the future. I think it's so powerful and so important. We call it assertiveness. Maybe you can find an assertiveness training class in your area. But just think about what assertiveness is. I am asserting something. I'm telling the truth. I'm being honest. It's really the only way to go. All right. And it will affect all your compulsive behavior in the most amazing way to begin to feel honest, truthful, genuine, and direct about how you feel, your yes and no, where your boundaries begin and end as far as just responding to correct to requests or solicitations or interactions or invitations of any kind. Being able to say no to other people, being able to say yes to your own experience leads directly to being able to say no to too much food or even feeling like compulsively overdoing anything. You won't break your own boundaries that way anymore. All right. Let me know how it goes. Bye-bye.